this one. All right, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much to all of you guys who were able to um, uh, make some time to attend uh, this session. And I would like to welcome you all here in ICSA, uh, which stands for International Institute of Computer Science and Administration. Are we all Filipinos here today or are there other nationalities? Meron po bang um, Filipino ba lahat or may ibang lahi? And are we all based in Kuwait or are there some who are based somewhere else? Meron po ba? Indians from Kuwait. I see. Welcome, welcome to ICSA. All right. So, okay. So before we move forward, I would just like to introduce myself. Okay. You know, from Hong Kong. Hi, perfect. I also have a student right now who's in Hong Kong at the moment. Okay. All right. So um, if you'll be enrolling to one of our courses, which is the health and social care course, I will be one of the instructors. Um, my name is Halsey Cruz. Okay. And you might be wondering what are the letters next to my name, Halsey Cruz, R-N-M-A-N. R-N stands for registered nurse because I was a uh, graduate of bachelor's degree, bachelor of science in nursing. And I also uh, a graduate, I, I was also a graduate of master of arts in nursing, major in nursing administration. And as for my work history, I was a staff nurse at Cardinal Santos Medical Center here in the Philippines. So um, during my experience as a staff nurse, um, I monitor the patients, okay? I check their health, health status, their conditions, I regularly assess them, okay? And if I notice that um, something's good is going on or something's negative that needs to be reported, um, uh, I, I notice some things like that, I uh, directly report it to their doctors, Okay. And also as a nurse, I formulated uh, appropriate nursing diagnosis, um, uh, which will help in uh, based on the assessment that I've made, which will help in uh, creating the treatment plan for the patient. Okay. So um, uh, also before we move forward, let me just lay some house rules. Okay. I know that we are not face to face, right? Um, the class will be conducted um, online or via Zoom, but we still need to follow certain house rules. Okay. So first, we are expecting the students to dress appropriately. Okay. So no sleeveless, no backless, no low neckline, no see-through, no anything that's too revealing. Okay. Um, I understand that there are some um, students who are okay with wearing this kind of uh, clothes, but there are some students who are not comfortable seeing clothing like this or people wearing these kinds of clothing. So to show respect to other students as well, um, we want to make sure that the students are dressed appropriately. Okay. Also, if you will be joining the classes, you need to make sure to update your Zoom name. Okay. So just right now, I can see some names on our list. Um, that is not their complete name. So it's kind of hard to address them. Okay. It's kind of hard to address you guys if you will not be putting your complete name. So during classes, we are expecting you to update your Zoom name. Make sure that uh, the template is your enrollment number and then your full name. Okay. Otherwise, you might not get accepted in the Zoom room. Right. Also, be on time. Um, uh, so that we can start early, come prepared, because here we have, um, uh, even if the class is done online or conducted online, we have uh, this what we call online classroom. And materials are uploaded there so that you can study in advance. Also, mute your mic if you are not the one who is going to talk so that others will not be distracted. Um, Michelle, please. So other people or other students will not be distract, distracted by the background noise, okay? Also, um, turn on your camera if possible so that I can also see you, 
Okay, I would know if you are really listening, if you are really, you know, um, taking note of what I was saying. Um, also have a good lighting. All right, um, find a quiet place so that you will be able to focus. And if possible, if you have, please wear headphones so that you can clearly hear what I was saying. Um, stay attentive. There would be instances wherein I'll be calling the attention of the student. So I'd appreciate if you will be participating in class. Also, raise your hand to talk. Either you type in chat that you wanted to share something or you can utilize the reactions in Zoom. And finally, be respectful. Be respectful to your instructors and also to your classmates. Okay, so now, who is ICSA, right? So before we move forward to the course, let me just give a brief background uh, about our school, okay? So who is ICSA? So ICSA has been known to be the pioneer of IT and management online education in Kuwait, okay? And ICSA is dedicated to providing the best quality of education with outclass teaching expertise and technical facilities. Okay? And here in ICSA, um, we do not just simply select students that we just wanted to join, regardless of the student's nationality, uh, regardless of the student's educational attainment, as long as the student is willing to learn, improve, and uh, be the best in the course that you'll be enrolling into, you are welcome here in ICSA. Also, we have here since 2001. So ICSA's academic heritage can be traced back to 2001. Okay? It only implies that um, the institution has been tested for so long. Okay, for so many years, all right, um, we have uh, um, being determined to continue striving hard for arranging and ensuring opportunities for the students for educational and personal development through a supportive learning environment. Also, we have here internationally recognized. So here uh, in ICSA, the courses that we are offering are aligned to different international standards. Therefore, uh, once the student graduates uh, from the institution, the diploma that you will be getting will be recognized abroad. Okay? You can use that as a credential even if you will be applying or working overseas. Okay. And also, we have here trusted by international employers. So, um, uh, apart from being partnered with international employers, we receive a lot of feedback from our students. Okay, um, if you will be checking our Facebook page, our students are leaving a lot of um, a lot of uh, feedback about uh, about their experience here in ICSA and. Um, they, they're telling us that they, they have successfully landed a job uh, either in, uh, in countries like UK or in Canada or in Australia, okay? So you'll be able to see their feedback there, okay? So again, that's ICSA. Now for our vision, so to be internationally recognized as a premier information technology and administration learning institution engaged in the discovery of knowledge, integration, and their applications with a global perspective that educates through innovative, responsive, and career-oriented programs. For our mission, ICSA is committed to the provision of quality education, which emphasizes high academic expectation in the field of information technology and administration to provide the students the knowledge and skills needed to succeed as individuals and as professionals. Um, pro promote academic excellence and provide opportunity to enhance student skills that will empower them to reach their potential provide career-oriented programs with a primary focus on those programs that are innovative and responsive to the needs of students and employers, ensure, that, ensure the highest quality of learning, teaching, and professional practice in a techno technologically enabled environment, and contribute to the advancement of IT and participate productively and responsibly in a rapidly changing society. Okay, so 
Um, now, why choose ICSA? So as I've mentioned earlier, we, we are international recognized. The diploma that you'll be getting can be used as a credential in the future if you'll be applying abroad or overseas. Also here in ICSA, we are offering the, or the courses that we are offering offers competitive fees. So we are always offering um, promotions every month. We have different promotions for our students. So if you're interested, um, please reach out to our admin so that uh, they can check and see what would be the promotion that they can offer for, for you. Also, as I've mentioned earlier here in ICSA, we offer diploma courses. So um, it's a diploma, not just certificate. So a diploma is more uh, comprehensive and more technical, and it will enable you to be, uh, get a better grasp of a specific subject. Also here in ICSA, we are offering multiple courses. Okay, We're not just um, offering courses specifically for healthcare, but for other, um, uh, other uh, subjects or other courses as well. Okay, So we have the secretarial course. We also have office management. Uh, we have business management. Um, for health and social course, we have level three and level four. Okay, um, but for other courses, you may want to visit our website to check the list of courses that we offer. Um, we actually have some students who are taking more than one course. So long as you're able to, um, you know, uh, you're able to um, take two courses at the same time, if your schedule will allow you, why not, right? And also um, choose ICSA because uh, it will allow you to have easy access to education. Okay, so um, easy access to education because the course that we are offering, um, we have courses that are offered uh, uh, through face to face. Okay, uh, but other courses are available online. Okay, meaning uh, we can practice distance learning. All right. When we say distance learning, according to Mariam Webster, they defined it as a method of study where teachers and students do not meet in a classroom, but use the internet, email, mail, etc. to have classes. Okay. So basically, just like what we're doing right now, we're in, we are meet, meeting over Zoom. Okay. We are not inside a classroom, a physical classroom, but we are uh, meeting uh, online. Um, so basically, I am conducting the classes via Zoom. I am providing, uh, providing the lecture. Okay. And the lecture is going to be an online live interactive classes because, again, it's via Zoom. Okay. Um, the students will be able to unmute themselves, get to participate. Also, they can get to utilize the chat box. Um, they can type in chat if they wanted to say, some, say something. Okay. If you have any clarifications, um, you can ask me right away. Okay. But I uh, also wanted to emphasize that there's actually no difference between face-to-face -face classes and live interactive classes since we are using the uh, latest technology. So you will feel as if I'm just right beside, us, uh, beside you to assist you. Okay. And we're actually getting a lot of feedbacks from our students that they find uh, live interactive classes to be uh, very helpful for them because for some students, they don't have rest day or they don't have a day off, okay? Or for some, they are in other countries, okay? For some, um, their rest day is always changing depending on the their uh, what their employers say. Uh, but while uh, with uh, live interactive classes, they'd be able to attend even if they are not at home. Um, not at home. Let's say they are in their cars. Okay, they are going somewhere. They are commuting, uh, or uh, they are at work. They are still able to join. Okay, so that's the beauty of distance learning. So students graduated from ICSA. It's now um uh, recorded as more than twenty two thousand. So it only means that. A lot of students uh, really trusted ICSA. Now, where is ICSA located? So we have several branches. Okay, We have a branch in Kuwait City. Uh, it's located in Malia, Kuwait City, office number 25, eighth floor in Panasonic Tower. Some students who opted to pay uh, in the office, and um, this is where you need to go if you are located in Kuwait. Now, in Mahabula, we also have a branch there. It's in Block 2, Street Number 20, Building Number 163. It's the yellow building, first floor. 
We also have in UAE, which is in room 208B, Rolex Clean Power, Banias Road, Diera, Dubai. And we have some partners in the UK. All right. All right. So that's it for our school. Let us now uh, move forward with the course that we're offering. So first, what is a caregiver? Okay. So a caregiver is someone or a person who tends to the needs or concerns of a person with short or long-term limitations due to illness, injury, or disability. Okay? So basically, uh, a caregiver is someone who gives care, okay? <laughs> gives care to someone else. Could be someone who is an elderly or someone who is young who needs assistance from other uh, another person, okay? Basically, who are not able to take care of themselves. So that is what we're going to do, okay? So according to Rosalind, Part Rosalind Carter, um, there are only four kinds of people in the world. So we have those who have been caregivers. So these are the previous caregivers who are now working as instructors to new caregivers. So, um, or those who had experience with caregiving and is able to apply it on their personal lives. Okay. Also, uh, another kind uh, of a uh, person in the world is are those who are currently caregivers. So these are the ones who are currently employed as caregivers, could be working in hospitals or in care homes. Okay? Also, those who will be caregivers, so these are the ones who are studying to become a caregiver. So if you will be enrolling with us, you will fall into this category. And, also, and finally, those who will need caregivers. So these are the ones who will need our assistance. Could be old or sick people who cannot attend to their needs. Okay. So basically, it's just trying to tell us that caregiving is universal. Regardless of your age, regardless of your um, what you're doing, of your work, um, uh, it, it, it can be noted that you, can be, uh, you are giving care. All right? Now, Take a look at this graph. This is a graph uh, entitled Aging Population, Projected Global Population Aged 60 Years or Over. Okay? So in 1990, uh, it, uh, it was determined that the uh, elderly, elderly is about 0.5 billion. Uh, in 2017, it was noted that it rose to 1 billion. Then by 2050, it was projected that it will go up to 2.1 billion. Then by 2100, it was projected that the number of people aged over 60 will go up to 3.1 billion. So this graph is just trying to tell us that the trend is increasing. Okay, It means that at a later time, we will be needing more caregivers. Okay, Therefore, the demand will also increase. And what will happen if the demand is high? If the demand for caregiver is high, then of course it's possible that our salary will increase as well, and uh, also a lot of benefits will increase, um, so that a lot of people will be working as caregivers. Okay. Now, what does a caregiver do? So, uh, one of the things that we're doing is we assess the medical needs. Okay. So as caregivers, we don't just simply rely on what the doctors or the nurses are saying. Okay. As caregivers, we also do our own assessment. Okay. We also keep track of their uh, medical appointments. Uh, we manage their medications. Um, uh, uh, also uh, assess their chronic conditions or assess their pain levels. Okay. And um, since we are part of the healthcare team, it is our obligation to work with the other healthcare professionals regularly. Okay, if we need to report to them from time to time, we'll go. Uh, we'll be doing that. Okay. Also, we prepare a care plan. So we prepare a care plan um, specifically designed for our patient. Okay, and it will be um, uh, helpful for us in determining what does our patient need. Also, we assist our patients with basic needs. So basic needs like their activities of daily living, like with eating, with dating, with grooming. Okay, uh, we assist them with that because those are the things that they cannot do on their own. Also, we provide companionship. So one of the most essential but sometimes overlooked 
parts of caregiving is companionship. Okay, so in care homes um, where elderly patients are staying, sometimes they are having a feeling of loneliness. Okay, and in elderly patients, it may lead to serious conditions or serious health consequences like depression. Okay. Also, as caregivers, we help with housekeeping. So, um, uh, it it it's gonna be hard for some of our patients to do simple tasks, um, uh, like with activities of daily living, right? And sometimes it's gonna be hard for them to maintain a home, like cleaning their house. Okay. So, as caregivers, we will help them with that. We will help them with uh, washing the dishes, taking out the garbage. Okay. Depending on the patient's need. Okay. Because if, if the patient tells you that she can still wash the dishes or she can still fold the clothes, we allow them to do that so that we can promote still the patient's independence. Also, we monitor medications. So we will be checking. Uh, it's our responsibility to check the timing of the medications that they need to take. All right. So that we will be able to give it on a timely manner. We also assess the care plan regularly. So there's a saying, um, the only constant in life is change, right? So same goes for our patients. Their needs are constantly changing. Therefore, the care plan um, will need to be adjusted as well, okay? Just like for this one, uh, let's say, for example, this woman um, just had an operation on her hip causing her to use a wheelchair, okay? And over time, if she no longer needs a wheelchair, then of course, we need to adjust the care plan to someone who is able to walk, okay? Also, we prepare their, their meals. Of course, we make sure that the meal that we're wearing is um, acceptable or is uh, really for their diet. Okay? Assist with transfer and mobility. And also, we provide transportation, okay? So, these are the common roles of a caregiver. Now, what are the perks of a career in caregiving? If you will become a caregiver in the future, what can you expect, okay, as perks? So, first, we have flexible working hours. So, um, it will be depending on the facility that you'll be applying into, but it could be 12 hours or 8 hours shifting. Um, but for some, um, it could be lesser than that, depending on the facility's need. Okay. And what's nice in the UK, if you'll be applying in the UK, they are very particular with break times. So, they want to ensure and they are encouraging their um, staff or employees to take their breaks, okay, to um, take enough rest since they believe that um, if you have enough rest, the outcome of your work will be of good quality as well, okay? Competitive pay. All right, when we say competitive pay because um, here, as you can see, um, how much do healthcare workers make in the United Kingdom? If you can pull up another uh, your browser or if you're if you're on your laptop, open open another tab and then go to xe.com. Okay. So the average healthcare worker salary in the United Kingdom is 23,015 pounds per year. Okay. So how much is that? So again, go to xe.com. Okay xe.com and you are uh, from there um, it's like a conversion website so for the amount space okay you put in there the amount which is 23,015 and then for the from you change it to gbp or british pound okay and then for the two you change it to the currency where you are at right now so let's say if you are in kuwait set it to kuwaiti dinar Okay, if you are in Hong Kong, then change it to um, HKD. Okay, if you're in the Philippines, then change it to PHP or Philippine Peso. So if you will be setting it to Kuwait, uh, or if we will be converting this one to Kuwaiti Dinar, that's going to be an amount of, let's see, that's 9,059 and 8,802 Kuwaiti Dinars. Okay, so that's a lot. Right. So with that amount of money, you'll be able to save up for yourself, save up for your future. You can even send money to your family. Right. You can um you can do a lot of 
things with that amount of so with caregivers just trying to tell us that you will really uh, earn a lot with this um with this career also less administrative work so um sometimes the task that consumes more of our time is that administrative work right the, uh, the paperwork or the computer work so as caregivers our focus would be attending to the physical and emotional needs of the patient instead of the paperwork also diversified experiences so you will have the opportunity to work across a wide variety of care settings that go beyond just homes such as daycare centers nursing homes and hospitals also growth opportunities so our task as caregivers does not stop there okay with our roles we get to learn from our experience we can undergo additional training um, seminars or we can go for further studies that may put us in a higher position in the future also impactful job so as caregivers we touch our patient lives okay so we leave an impact we build a close relationship that makes our jobs easier and more tolerable. Okay, of course, the more uh, we become friends with our patients, um, they will become more cooperative uh, with us. Okay, for example, when you are feeding the patient, uh, you uh, when you are feeding your patient, um, sometimes um the patient will not cooperate if they don't like you, right? But as you build friendship or rapport with your patient, um, they will become more cooperative, and feeding time will be here okay oops also we have here high demand so as i've uh, as what we've seen on the um graph earlier the aging population is increasing therefore the demand is increasing as well okay so of course the higher the demand the more the salary and benefits we can expect and also more one-on-one -on -one patients. So um, there will be instances where in, um, the care will be delivered is on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So uh, you will be able to dedicate your time and your services to a smaller number of patients that are within your comfort, uh, comfort range, okay? Allowing you to deliver a much higher standard of service and build stronger bonds with your patients. Okay, so those are the different perks of a career in caregiving. Okay, so this is what you can expect if you become caregivers in the future. Flexible working hours, competitive pay, less administrative work, diversified experiences, um, growth opportunities, impactful job, high demand, more one-on-one -on -one with patients. And um, several employers are actually offering other benefits um, that you can enjoy as you work as caregivers in their companies. Okay, so now let's go to the course that we are offering. Okay, so the title of the course is UK Diploma in Health and Social Care, also known as caregiver course okay so here in icsa we are offering um uh you can either enroll to level level three or level four okay so the difference of the two with level three you will be able to get a diploma course with 60 credit while with level four you will be able to get a diploma that provides 120 credits okay okay so just to show you the qualification structure for level three, again, with level three, you will be getting 60 credits. And what you need to do is to be able to uh, pass all these six units. Okay, so we have an introduction to health and social care, communication for health and social care, promoting health in the population and person centered care. And then here we have optional units. So you just need to select two from the three. So either understanding diabetes care, stroke care or dementia care while with level four okay again you are required to complete six units to achieve 120 credits okay so what are those six units we have academic study skills communicating in health and social care an introduction to healthcare policy reflective practice managing people in health and social care sociology concepts in health and ill health okay so that's the difference of the uh, uh, per, uh on the qualification structure of level three and level four now qualification wise who can enroll for level three um 
it is not required that you are a high school graduate, meaning if um, uh, you haven't graduated high school yet, you can enroll to level three. Okay, uh, If you are 17 years old and up, you can enroll it with level three. And also, both for level three and level four, you should be able to communicate in English, both in oral and written form. Why? Because your requirements are going to be submitted in English. So it is expected that you should be able to converse, speak, or write in English. Okay. Now with level four, the requirement is that you need to be at least high school graduate. Okay. So uh, we would know if you're a high school graduate because you will be required to submit um, transcript of records or a high school diploma. Okay. So, but if you are not able to graduate in high school, okay, let's say you don't have a high school diploma, but you are a graduate of level three, health and social care level three, you are still able to enroll to level four, okay? Also, it is expect, uh, required that you are 18 years old and up, and same in level three, you should be able to communicate in English, both in oral and in written form, okay? Now, what are the requirements to pass the course? So, of course, you need to attend live Zoom classes, okay? So, if you will be um, enrolling, you will be required to make an attendance, and you need to have an attendance of at least uh, three Zoom attendance per month, okay? So, in a month, um, so the, the session is only once a week, okay? Once a week. However, again, um, you are required to have at least three. So um, we're not saying that you can go on absent, uh, one absent in a month, because of course, for you to learn, we want to make sure that you will be attending all the classes. But there are instances wherein the student will reach out saying that they are sick or they cannot go on rest day. That's why we are allowed not to do that or to go on absent. Okay. Also, you need to have a score of at least 40 in the rubric, okay? So here's the rubric. You need to get a score of 40 or basic, okay? 40 or basic on content, application of theory and literature, knowledge and understanding, presentation and writing skills, and referencing. So basically, if you will be submitting your assignments, we are just not just looking at what you have written there, okay? We are also looking into the... Uh, details of the assignment, okay? If you really understood it, if you um, based your answers uh, or if you um, uh, widen your knowledge regarding the topic by searching online, so we'll be able to see it from there, okay? So we need you to get at least a score of 40 for you to pass, okay? Now, what are the requirements to achieve certification of the diploma? So here in this course, Unlike the regular courses back in college where in, um, there are midterms or finals or preliminary examinations, here in this course, you are only required to answer assignments. Okay? So for, uh, for every unit, okay, for every unit, there is um, an assignment, okay? so the, an assignment that you need to answer. So meaning you need to submit six assignments for this, uh, for this course. Okay, so you need to make sure that they are all complete, okay, um, written in English, understandable, and again, um, meeting the, um, uh, the 40 on the rubric, okay. And also, to, uh, for you to achieve certification of the diploma, you need to, of course, fully pay the tuition fee, all right. Now, how is the diploma going to be acquired? So, right after you finish the course or right after you submit the all the assignments, you will not be able to get the diploma right away. Okay, It goes through a process. So uh, what's the process? Of course, the assignment will be submitted and will be checked for plagiarism. So I will be the one to do that. I will check your assignments. Okay, And then assessment and grading from instructor and revision if needed. Uh, and then after that, once the assignment um, is um, okay for me, all right, I will be forwarding that to our internal verification, which is our academic manager for individual submission, okay? And, and then um, once our acad academic manager accepts your answers, okay, um, she will now, um, she, um, and 
there's no revision needed, okay, she can now forward it to our external verification. This is now the part where we forward the assignments to London or to the UK. And this is done by batch, okay, every 10th of the month, right? So for this one, um, it usually takes uh, three weeks, but for some, it may take up to 90 days, depending on the backlog in the UK or in Qualify, right? So if external verification has no issues, we will send the diplomas for authentication to Kuwait Embassy or Philippine Embassy in the UK, which would take more or less two weeks, and delivery back to Kuwait is seven to 10 days. Now, we can have your um, diplomas be authenticated, okay? If you, uh, it will be up, uh, authenticated through Apostille, there's going to be an additional fee of 40 KD and embassy attestation, 20 KD. But again, um, you have the option to choose your own authenticator, okay? Some students just wanted um, uh, their diplomas to be authenticated so that there won't be any issues if they will be apply, applying abroad, okay? Now, uh, if you will be enrolling in this course, you are also um, required to um, purchase or borrow materials. Okay, this course in, is an online course. The um, online course, however, we are also teaching you bonus lessons like with vital signs, uh, also for um, basic life support. Um, also in checking the blood sugar level of the patients, we are also giving that lessons, even if they're not part of the qualification structure. That's why we are requiring the students to be ready with materials so that um, we can do a demonstration, even if it's done online. Okay, so what are the materials that you need to prepare? Um, you need to have a BP apparatus, also known as Figma manometer. Um, if you'll be buying, make sure that it's an aneroid BP apparatus. If you are based in Kuwait, uh, I, I will still allow you to use mercurial BP apparatus if you are just borrowing. Okay, But if you are about to purchase, please buy an aneroid BP because in other countries, mercurial BP app is no longer accepted. Okay, So ma'am, I already have a digital BP apparatus. Is this okay? I apologize. We cannot use, the, uh, we cannot use this one because a digital BP app, um, you will not be able to learn the skill from there. Okay. Also, please be ready with a stethoscope, either a single head or a dual head stethoscope. We'll be using this one as we conduct the blood pressure discussion. Also, glucometer. So in buying uh, the... Uh, in uh, for the blood sugar uh, level, um, in taking the blood sugar level discussion, uh, we need you to be ready with the entire set, okay? Meaning um, uh, the strips, the lancet and everything must be available, okay? So that's it. Those are the materials that uh, you'll be needing, okay? And of course, be ready with a laptop or computer because it would be easier for you to edit your assignments if you will be using your laptop or computer. If you are just using your smartphones or tablets like iPads, you will still be able to make your assignments from there. However, you might find it hard to edit them. So it would be best if you'll be uh, using a laptop or desktop, okay? If you don't have a laptop, you can uh, reach, out, reach out to our admin and check if we are offering any promotions or if they are selling out laptops that you can buy, okay? So that's it. But before we end this orientation, I would just like to leave this quote. Um, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Okay, so I need you to imagine yourselves a few years from now. Um, do you think in three to five years from now, are you going to be thankful for yourselves that you take this course and have a better future? So there, so I highly encourage everyone to enroll to our health and social care care course, um, take the first step now. Um, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Okay, so that's all for today. I really appreciate all of you being here today and the floor is now op open for Q&A. Okay, so we also have our admins here. If you have any questions, please raise them now so that we can address them right away. <clears throat> Hi, ma'am. Ma'am. Hi, ma'am. Hi. Ma, my name is Berlin from Berlin, ma'am from UAE po sa Dubai. Uh, Nakagraduate kasi ako ng caregiver. 
Pero gusto ko ulit mag-aral. Hindi dahil sa ma-enhance. Kasi pa Canada na sana po ako. Gusto ko malaman kung pwede siyang ipawes. West kasi yung problema, ma'am. Sa papuntang Canada. Yung diploma ko, hindi siya pwedeng i-west kasi short courses siya. So, eh, gusto ko po malaman kasi nung nakita ko po sa ICSA yung nakita ko yun dun na pwede palang ipawes yung diploma namin. Yes, um, the Diploma in Health and Social Care course, there, the Diploma in Health and Social Care course that you will receive is internationally recognized because it has a seal of a UK-based qualification okay, recognized by Ofcol. Ofcol is counterpart of CHED in the Philippines. Okay? Okay. So the diploma is authenticated by DFA and assessed okay. by WES or World Education System for uh, there's who doesn't know. So, um, you can use this if you will be applying to Canada. Okay, ma'am. Anyone you, ma else who has questions? You're welcome. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Am I audible? Hello po. Hi. Hi. I, okay. I'm Arlene po from Kuwait. And ma'am, uh, so if I will enroll for an online, it will be online for the entire course? Um. Right now we are already, because before this course is just really online, but now uh, okay. we are also offering a face-to-face -face course. So if you will be uh, enrolling online, it will only be purely online only. If you will be starting as face to face, face to face till the end. Okay, po. Okay, po. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, this is Miss Rachel from ICC Kuwait. So, um, hello, Ma'am Rivika. Ganito siya. Um, yung course fee natin is um nakadipindi siya yung palitan kung saang bansa tayo. So, for online class po, kung nandito tayo sa Kuwait is um seventy k di siya per month ang nine months duration. Pag eighteen months po is um thirty five k di siya per month. So. I think meron din dito nag-join na interested sa face-to-face, -face, no? So, magkaiba po yung um, course fee natin for face-to-face -face and online. Ma'am Rebecca, saan ano ka? Saan country po kayo naka-reside, ma'am? Dito pa ba siya? Okay, sa Hong Kong po, more or less na sana siya pag 35 KD, equivalent po siya ng mga 6,400 or 6,500 pa. Per month, pag 18 months. Um, excuse me, just to an answer Jane's question. Hi, ma'am. If I enroll 18 months for level four, uh, can I shift to nine months if I have already budget? Okay. So for that one, if you will be uh, enrolling online, because the pacing that uh, we're following online is nine months duration. So in nine months time, you'll be able to finish answering the and uh, all the assignments or all the discussions for all the modules. But payment wise, it will be completed in 18 months. But if you can settle in advance, if you can um, make a uh, payment ahead of time, you can go ahead and do that. That way, you'll be able to finish the course early and we'll be able to endorse you for verification at an earlier time. Basically, you, you'll be graduating earlier than 18 months. Hi, ma'am. Uh, ano lang po, uh, kasi yung pag-inquired ko po, ma'am, I have inquired for six months and then I have to pay 425 KD a month. For six Online. months po kasi, that's what we call um uh, special class, okay? Because the yes, courses po. that we're offering, the shortest is supposedly nine months only. But there are some students who are um joining a special special class. 
So, the session, instead of just ha attending once a week, it's going to be twice a week. But of course, since it's going to be conducted or be finished or completed within six months' time, it is expected that you'll be paying a monthly fee that is higher as compared yes. to those who are uh, who will be finishing in nine months. Yes po, yes po. Uh, na, na ano na po ako, na na, na po ako ni Ma'am Giselle na it will be 125 KD a month. Right, right. Yes po. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have questions? Those are able to hear me well. It's suddenly because I'm located in the Philippines right now. So this is the BTS distance learning now. We are all over the world. So it and it's suddenly rained harsh again. So please don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. We'd be happy to answer. We have admin here as well. Ma'am, bakat sobrang mahal ng tuition siya ay sa inyo ng caregiver. Kinonvert ko kasi yung yung Kuwait dito sa UAE. Parang nabigla ako. <laughs> Akat mas mahal siya. Uh, I, I do apologize. I don't have an answer to that because I'm not the one who's setting the tuition fee for the course. But um, Hello. Um, yeah. Ma'am Berlin, kasi ganito siya, yung diploma po ninyong matatanggap po, ma'am, is internationally recognized po yan. Hindi po siya TISDA or certificate lang. So, kaya mas ang andenan yung diploma niyo po is manggagaling po yan sa UK. Kaya kung i-compare niyo po yan, ma'am, sa ibang school po, yung course fee natin, mas mababa po siya. Kasi uh -huh. kung titingnan niyo po yung mga UK diploma courses, mas mahal po talaga yung course fee po doon, ma'am. Um, kasi hindi siya under ng TISDA po ha. Take note lang, hindi siya under ng TISDA, hindi siya certificate. Diploma po siya, TOR, with diploma po yung matatanggap niyo. Apo. Mm-mm. It's 140 sorry. units, ma'am, no? Ang level 4? Yes po, ang level 4 po is with 120 units po siya. So, diploma with TOR po yung inyong matatanggap. Wala po siyang expiration po. Ma'am, 140 or 120? 120 units po siya ang level 4. Okay. Mm -hmm. Level 4 po is recommended namin pag mga high school grad or um, college level. Pag level 3, recommended namin siya for um, high school level po. Okay. Okay po. And take note lang, ang face-to-face -face classes is available lang siya dito sa Kuwait po. Pag nasa outside Kuwait like Brunei or Philippines, Hong Kong, ang available po natin is online live interactive class via Zoom po siya. I mean, Kuwait naman po, ma'am, pero I, cho I chose bet ano lang online kasi dahil sa work ba. Ah, uh, okay. Good. Uh -oh. Oh, Pag sa oh, online kasi, kasi ma'am, healthy po yung ano niya, instructor. Oo, oh, oh, tsaka para hindi maano, walang reason na hindi maka-attend. Tsaka maganda din siya sa online kasi meron siyang recorded class na pwede niyang i-review anytime na available kayo. Kasi minsan may mga emergency tayo, hindi tayo makakatay ng class, so pwede tayong mag-review sa recorded class. Isa po siyang advantage din yun. Kasi pag sa face-to-face, -face, pag mag-absent kayo, absent talaga kayo. Hello ma'am, tanong ko lang po. Ang about sa TOR ko, in case kung mag-enroll mag ako, Iiba yung spelling ng name ko kaysa passport ko. Okay lang ba yun? Baka hindi kaya ako magka-problema at the end? As long as um, spelling lang yung nagkaiba, hindi talaga yung buong pangalan, baka pwede pa natin siyang magawaan ng paraan. Ipa-check natin, ipa natin yan sa registrar. Pwede mo siyang isend sa WhatsApp ko yung um, records mo for sa, I mean, sa, ano mo, sa diploma mo ng high school or you are man din yung passport mo para mapatsik ko siya sa registrar po kung tatanggapin siya or hindi. Pero usually naman, pag uh, misspeeling lang yung magkaiba, pwede siya. Unless kung Opo. ibang pangalan na siya. Ah, ay sige po. Kasi, anong nangyari kasi, 
Uh, since elementary hanggang nag- nag-college ako, yun talaga yung spelling na gamit ko. Kaso lang nung hindi nila ma-found yung kinuha nila doon sa... Uh, kumuha kami ng birth certificate, yung papa ko, hindi makita yung record ko. Pinarehistro niya ako kaso nabago nga yung spelling. So yun na yung ginamit mm-hmm. ko hanggang nag-abroad ako. Yung bagong ano. So magkaiba doon sa mga diploma ko at saka yung sa passport ko. Okay lang yan. Pacheck natin yan sa registrar. I-send mo sa amin yung ano mo, records mo ng school records mo tapos yung passport copy mo. Ah, sige po, sige po. Uh, actually, wala, hindi ko pa nakuha yung TOR ko. Pa, sige, sige ma'am. Tingnan ko kung anong-anong maging resulta nito after. Hmm. Pwede mo akong i-message dito sa ano? Sa WhatsApp. Ah, sige ma'am. Thank you. Oh, good afternoon. Hello? Yes po, good afternoon po. May tanong lang po ako. Kailan po yung start ng face-to-face dito sa Kuwait? Actually, nag-start na yung klase ng face-to-face. Pwede po kayong humabol. Kaso nga lang sa ngayon, is yung instructor natin for face-to-face is magbabakasyon siya. So for the mm-hmm. meantime, habang nasa bakasyon siya, um, online muna yung classes niya. Tapos balik niya is September. Saka pa yun mag-resume yung face-to-face classes by September pa. Pero pwede na po kayong mag-enroll this month para at least maka-start kayo. Pero Facebook, ano lang siya? Uh, sa online muna online. siya. Sa Zoom muna siya. Tapos pagbalik niya, sa September, yun, mag-resume na yung face-to-face classes. Mm, so, magkano nga yun per month? 75? Yes po. 75 kg siya per month. Ang 9 months duration sa level 4. Um, yun po, 9 mm-hmm. months. And then yung 18 months, 38 kg siya per month. So, pwede bang ano? Pwede bang kasi actually ang mga document ko um, may kumuha. Pwede bang to follow na lang ng ano? Kasi kailangan ko pang mag-request sa school ko sa uh, Ama College na ibigay yes. uh, mag-papilit ako ng POR. So, pwede ba? To follow na lang yung ganun? And then pwede, uh, pwede naman siya. Yes po. Yes po. Pwede mo mm-hmm. pa-follow yung ano nyo, requirements nyo. Mm-hmm. Ang initial requirements lang upon enrollment is yung civil ID nyo front and back copy, mm-hmm. picture to buy to herself. Yung school credentials is pwede siyang to follow. If outside, okay. kuwait naman, kahit passport copy nyo lang and then picture to buy to herself. Yun nga, nasa ano? Yung... Picture nyo lang po siya kasi soft copy lang naman yung kailangan natin. Mm-hmm. Pero meron ako ano, may passport ako, pwede ko naman yung send, may civil ID, ganun, katulad nga, nandito naman ako sa kuwait. Pero yun nga lang yung POR uh-huh. ko wala talaga sa kailangan ko mag-request sa old school ko para mabigyan ako ulit ako ng panibagong copy. Mm-mm. Okay na yun. So, yung 18 months na duration na yun, ganun pa rin ba yung bayad per month? 75? 38 PD siya per month pag 18 months. Ah, okay. 38 na lang siya. Kung Mm-mm. pa ngayon, sabi mo nga, uh, online pa, so ano nga, ano nga raw naman yung online class? Yan po, ma'am, is um, depende siya sa schedule ng instructor po. Kasi nakabakasyon siya eh, parang iano niya lang siya, i- isisingit niya lang sa bakasyon yung klase. <laughs> Kasi uwi siya ng Pilipinas. Oo. Oh, oh. uh-huh. Kaya depende Kailan siya po? kung ano yung ano. Kailan po ang uwi niya? Ano, no, sa no. July 30, actually flight niya na sa July 30. No, hindi ba pwede nga no? <laughs> Ako kasi mas, mas prepared ko talaga yung face. Kasi makulit ako, marami akong dami. Gusto ko talaga marami. Okay lang. <laughs> so, pwede ba mag-start ako pagbalik na lang niya? Ah, um, pwede naman din. Wala naman problema. Ako, okay lang naman din. Ba akong mag-subject pag gano'n or topic? Okay lang din. Nasa sa'yo yan. Depende yan sa'yo, ha? Pero kung gusto mo nang mag-enroll ngayon and then mag-antay ka na magbalik siya, walang problema yan. Oo, oh, yun lang. Tapos, hmm. anong oras naman pag face-to-face? Anong araw at oras? Um, ano siya, meron tayong Friday batch and Saturday batch. Anong araw ba yung ano mo, day off mo? Saturday, pwede ako mag half day. Saturday ang level 4 na 9 months and 18 months mm-hmm. is mixed siya to 30 to 6:30 PM. Mhm. 2:30 to 6:30. Pero pag Friday batch ka, ang 18 months is 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Ang 9 months is 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. 
Pag Friday. Hmm. Pag Friday, anong oras? 11 a.m. to? 2 p.m. po siya. Hmm. Ang okay. 18 months. So, ah, 3 hours. Mm-mm. Doon sa level 3, ang schedule ng level 3 for face-to-face is 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Saturday po yun. Kukunin ko yung level 4. So, doon na lang ako sa Saturday. Pwede mo akong i-message sa WhatsApp kung ma'am ha, para sa confirmation okay. ng ano mo. Okay, i-message kita ha. Wag mo uh, i-message mo lang okay. ako sa WhatsApp ko. Uh, okay. Na, okay. na ano ka na yung ano, I think ka-message naman kita sa WhatsApp. So, message mo lang ako dito sa WhatsApp ko. All right, all right. Thank you po. First confirmation po. Okay, welcome. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, madam, question po. Yes po, ma'am. Uh, if ever po ba na, di ba, matapos na yung, ano, yung course, may uh-huh. program po ba si Iksa na, ano, na ihanap si graduate ng work niya or kami yung bahalang mag-apply? Yes po. Actually ngayon, si ICAC is nag po kami ng um, graduates po papuntang, ano, UK po yung hinahanapan namin ng employer po, ma'am. Sa so, ngayon sa UK pa lang siya. Pwede namin kayo hanapan ng employer sa UK po. Ah, uh, okay po. That's, mm-hmm. oo. If ever po ba, ano, uh, yung sa, syempre, graduate ng caregiver, wala pang experience, possible ba na mapasama siya or not? Actually naman, sa pag-apply ng work, is actually, nag, ano naman sila na, minsan hindi na nila kailangan ng work experience, okay lang, kasi tinitraining naman din siya before ka mag-start ng work mo eh. So, depende pa rin yan sa company. Kasi may mga company naman tinatanggap kahit lang experience sa work. Uh, okay po, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome po. Meron pa pong may tanong? Anyone else who may have questions? Hi po, Ma'am Rebecca. Yes po, Ma'am. Mag-message ka lang po sa WhatsApp po. So, meron pa kayong mga questions? So, kung wala na kayong mga questions, I think, um, Pwede na tayong mag, ano, mag-end ng Zoom. Ma'am, Ma'am Halsey, may pahabol pa po ba kayo, Ma'am? Ay, wala na po. Um, that actually, thank you so much for all of you guys who attended today's session. And thank you for uh, those who raised their questions, very much interested in joining the class. So we are hoping that you'll be enrolling soon so that um, you know we can start and finish this right away. It's just nine months time, so it's going to be easy to, very easy to, you know, finish the course. So I'll be seeing you real soon. Please don't hesitate to reach out to our admins. Um, Miss uh, Rachel already left her number in the chat box. So if you're interested, you can leave a message or send her a message through WhatsApp. Thank you so much again for attending. Uh, I hope to see you all soon. Thank you, Pa. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining.